study. If you will, let's turn to a familiar passage of Scripture over in Luke chapter number 2. Let's look at this thing this morning um, and see what we can, we can glean from the Scriptures. And I'll, uh, I'll hope that uh, we can find ourselves either saying amen or saying oh me. We need, we need some working on, amen? I know I need some working on but, uh, because uh, I do have some, I do have some uh, faults and some sin from time to time that I have to ask for forgiveness as well as anybody else, amen? So, uh, but I, I thank the Lord that He provides a way that we can do that and we can get forgiveness for, for when we mess up. Thank God for that. All right, uh, Luke chapter number six, um, two, I'm sorry, Luke chapter number two, we're looking at this thing, and uh, uh, I want to look down here, eh, let's just read the first few verses here, and let's, uh, let's, go, uh, let's go with that, amen? Verse one, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Be taxed. I, I better. I better not. Amen. And, <laughs> and this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. You see, Joseph was a good, law-abiding citizen that paid his taxes. And those are the ones that are getting beat up. Amen. Anyway, let's stay out of the political side. Look here in verse number five. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And, uh, and I look at that thing, and, uh, and you know, I, I see the verse. And uh, you know what God does? <clears throat> God doesn't corner a man and make him, uh, uh, him or a lady, a person. He doesn't corner them and make them choose him to be saved. Okay, God doesn't do that. And I see in this verse right here, verse number five, that God provides a way that if a man or a woman wants to rebel and, and believe and, and, and go out a different way, God will allow them to do it. God will, listen, God will give them the, uh, God will give them the uh, uh, I don't know, the, the ammunition or, or the, or the uh, you know, reading in the Bible. God will give them a way to do it. God's not going to force anybody to get saved. And you say, well, how's that? Well, I mean, here it is. There's Mary, his espoused wife. What does that mean? It means his to-be wife. Yep. Mary wasn't his wife. But, but, but here she was. She was great with child. And if a man wants to rebuke and, and, and rebuttal and, and, and a man wants to uh, reject and say, hey, you see that ungodly living and all that garbage, God will give him a way to do that. Yep. If you want to do wrong, you can do wrong. Amen. <laughs> If you want to go the other way, God will give it to you. He'll give you all the, all the ammunition you want to. And that's the reason why the world is doing the things that they're doing. And God will give them in Romans chapter number 1 a reprobate mind because they decide, hey, this book is messed up. But what they miss is, is that that child that Mary had was a child of God. Amen. Had nothing to do with man's blood. It's the only way God could do it. But boy, you got your scoffers, don't you? You got the ones out there, and, they, and you know what? They, they not, we're not going to preach that, and this has nothing to do with the message today. But anyway, they're, they're, they're the Roman soldiers, you know, when Mary went out to see her sister, her cousin Elizabeth, you know what the rumor was? The rumor was that Mary went out and had a fling with a Roman soldier, and that's how she got pregnant. That's the, that's the story that, that the Pharisees, that they, they were passing around. And they told them that, hey, they told Jesus, they said, hey, you know, uh, you know we don't believe or follow one that's been born out of fornication. That's what they said. <laughs> so if, you want, if, if a person wants to believe uh, the garbage of the world and wants to believe the stuff, God says, have at it. Amen. Have at it. <laughs> Amen. So what does that mean? It means we have a God of love and we have a God of compassion and we have a God of mercy and grace and we have a God that will not overstep your will. That's right. That means that if you want to live your ungodly life and you want to go your way, God says have at it. Yeah. But here's a way out of that mess. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> here's a way you don't have to do that. 
And God, God provides a church. God provides people that love you. God provides a truth. He provides a book with the truth in it. Amen. God provides these things so you don't have to go to hell. So you don't have to go that way. Amen. All right. All right. Let's, let's get back to the message. Amen. You ought to, hey, listen, there was, I had, honest to goodness, I had 10 points this morning. I did. <laughs> but now I've only got five. <laughs> I cut it in half. Amen. So, so there, there's, there's a shouting ground right there already. Amen. So we get, that's what he said in verse 5, to be taxed with Mary as a spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I want to look at that this morning in verse number 7, talking about there was no room. And I know you've heard songs, you've heard messages, and you've heard those things, but that's just what the Lord put on my heart this morning. And I just want to look at just a few things, five points, five, five points uh, of, 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 uh, of this thing about no room. And maybe we just, maybe we just need to be reminded about some of these things. So let's go to the Lord's Prayer and let's, uh, let's see what God has for us. And uh, brother, uh, brother Papa, would you, would you pray for us before we preach, please? <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy. Yeah. Father, we love to see you next year. Father, we thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Father, for all those people that's back today and that's been out sick. Father, we thank you for answering prayers there. And Father, we lift up those that are still on our prayer list. Father, right. That's sick uh, this morning, Father, and all the needs there on our prayer list, Father, and our church family. Just lift them up in prayer right now in the name of Jesus, Father, and ask that your touch will be up on each one of those. Father, I pray, Lord, this morning you open our hearts and open our minds to the preaching of your precious word this morning, dear Father. Thank you, Father, for everything you do for us. Thank you for the good Sunday school lesson this morning. Yeah. And the reading of your precious word, dear Father. And Father, just pray you got us upon the man of service today, Father. Pray that all things be done for your glory and for your honor. Yeah. And lift up Brother John this morning, strengthen his body. God, just lift up your spirit. Give them the liberty to bring your message this morning, Father. And we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just a few side notes this morning. If you, if you look there in chapter number 1, I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, if you look there in verse number 42, Mary, as she visits Elizabeth, that uh, you find a couple of things here in, in verse number 41. The Bible says that when she came into the house, in verse 40, it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. What a, what a thing. You say, well, what's, what's so... Well, uh, that was, that was uh, John the Baptist that was in the womb of her cousin Elizabeth. But, but that's, not the, that's, that's important, but it's not the most important thing. What's the most important thing? Well, it says there that the babe leaped in her womb. She was six months pregnant. It wasn't a fetus. It's a baby. Got that? So if you didn't get it, look in 42. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. Mary's not blessed above women. She's not the mother of God. She's the mother of the child, Jesus. The earthly, uh, physical child, Jesus. She's not the mother of God. Hey, if she was the mother of God, she would have to be omnipresent. Wouldn't she? She'd have to be everywhere. And, and, and she'd have to be able to answer the prayers of all the people. When Jesus was on the cross, this ain't the message either. I, you know. But when Jesus was on the cross and they came to the cross... You know, and they started, Jesus, Jesus didn't, uh, 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 you know, when the, what, what was it, the thief that was on the side, he looked to Jesus and he said, he said remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom? Did Jesus look at him and say, well, you need to be talking to my mama? He didn't say that. <laughs> he said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise, didn't he? I mean, he never one time called her mother. Right. Not one time in scripture did he call her mother. Right. Not one time. Matter of fact, when he was on the cross and John was down there, he told John, he, he, said, he told her, he said, behold thy son. And he told John, he said, behold thy mother. That's what he said. Amen. Anyway, you see how people get that stuff messed up? See, if you don't have your Bible and you just got somebody telling you stuff, you're going to get messed up like crazy. You're going to be as messed up as a soup sandwich. Amen. So we find here she's blessed among women, not above. Amen. And then you find in verse 44, again, for lo, as soon as this voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, here's what Elizabeth said, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. 
Twice. He's called a babe, not, not, not a fetus. Amen. And then, look at this, in verse 46, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. What a concept. Mary needed a Savior. Isn't that something? Mary needed a Savior. I, the mother of God, she needed a Savior. Really? No, yeah, yeah. Why? Because she was just as sinful as, as, as you and I. She was not immaculate. And she had kids after after the Lord Jesus Christ was born. Amen. And again, you know, I, I, that's just a whole thing, you know. We, we do honor, and, and as Elizabeth honored Mary, and, and obviously God thought a lot of Mary uh, to be able to do. The, but look, I mean, look how God used Paul. Look how God used John and Peter and James and all these other men and all this stuff. And not one time were they ever elevated above Jesus Christ. Amen. She was a vessel that God used. And God can use us just like he used her. Amen. Amen. So let's get on the message this morning. Here we are. It said that she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. I want to go through just a few things this morning about this thought of no room. Amen. And we find that in Luke chapter 2, and verse number 7, where it just simply says there was no room for them in the end. I was sitting this morning in the, in the vehicle and, and uh, waiting on my wife there at Walmart, and I, there was a, I was listening to, to uh, 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 the, the, the radio, XM radio, and there was a song on there about we need to make room for, uh, for the Lord this Christmas, amen. And, and so uh, I, that, that, uh, they didn't know I was going to preach this message, amen. I didn't call them and tell them, and, and, and it just come on there and I was listening to it a little bit but and, and then there's songs that that this probably not in our song book but there are songs out there it just simply says that there's no room and so I just want that thought this morning to to be in our mind and give us a few instances about um, possibly uh, you know where that we could maybe make room amen uh, where there may not be a room and, and, and here's here's my first point this morning about uh, how about if, if uh, no room in our day how about just our day Amen? Just our day. Uh, what do we do in our day? Our job, our daily uh, routines at home. Just too busy sometimes for church or the Lord. Here we are. We get up and we get ready for work. And, and we're ready to face the day. Everything's in order and, and here it's, uh, things are, are the way they should be possibly. And, and then it's just, just heading off good. Our coffee, we get our coffee. Amen? Don't talk to me till I get my coffee stuff. Amen? I don't drink coffee, but uh, I'm not a morning person. Okay, I'm just not a morning person, am I, honey? Yeah, my daughter and my wife is going, amen. So I'm just not a morning person. So, but anyway, here we are. We got things going. We got our coffee. We got our breakfast. We got our daily plan in place. And here we go. We go through the day. We go to work and, and the work and everything. The Lord gives us a good day. I mean, you know, things kind of fall in place for a change. Amen. And it's kind of like, you know, we get some things accomplished for a change. And it feel like, you know, hey, uh, here we are. We're doing good. We drive home. The day's ended, we're driving home, we come home and we're in the vehicle and we're thinking about, you know, we got this done, we're feeling good about this and possibly, you know, whenever we, we we're driving home, it depends on how long your drive is, we know what we're going to do when we get home, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, uh, relax a little bit, we, 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 we just kind of pat ourselves on the back about, you know, hey, I feel good, this has happened and, and man, we just, uh, everything's going okay and then we get home and the and, and next thing is, is, uh, I don't know, some of you guys may help with supper, I don't know. Uh, I usually don't. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, the wife has got supper fixed and, you know, or is working on it. And here you are, you're sitting in the lazy boy. and <clears throat> Or you might be the lazy boy, I'm not sure which. But anyway, you're sitting in a lazy boy and you're relaxing a little bit. And you're waiting on supper. And boy, you're just, you're just ready to sit back and relax a little bit. You, you know, you eat your supper and you get your belly full, amen, and you're just kind of sitting there and you're kind of dozing off if it's Monday night or Thursday night or whatever. <clears throat> Maybe you might catch a ball game, you know, a football game, and, you, you know, you just, you're just watching some of that. All right, listen, some of you guys, you just might be feeling a little festive and you just, you just let the ladies, let mom and the girls, you know, watch a Christmas movie, amen? You know, the one where the, where, the, uh, where, the, where the guy goes back to the hometown and he goes back to the hometown. He hadn't been there in a long time, you know? I know that one. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I'm, they're, all, <laughs> they're all the same, right? I mean, you know, come on. 
I wasn't the only one that figured that out. You know, it's like the first 10 minutes, first five minutes in the movie, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> So there they go. I mean, you sit and you watch the Christmas movie. You're feeling festive. You get that, and boy, it's just everything's good. Amen. And, and you know, you you start watching it, and you're getting getting a little getting a little tired, and you know, and, and you just you know say, hey, you know what? It's getting late. I got to get up early. And so, guess I'm I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and go to bed. It's it's ah, it's kind of late. So getting up early is tough on me. I'm not a morning person. Good night, everybody. Let me ask you something. What's missing? I mean, I mean, you know, I, that's, that's, that's just a little routine. It may not be exactly what you go through. It may not be exactly what I go through, but it's some of the things we go through. And when we get home, you know what? It's Tuesday night. It's not, it's not Wednesday. It's not Sunday. So it's Tuesday night. So, you know, hey, uh, you know, I can skip it a little bit today because, you know, my, uh, Wednesday's coming and I can handle it tomorrow. We'll be ready for Wednesday. Or it's, it's not Saturday, so I don't have to prepare for Sunday. Listen, it's not Sunday morning on the way to church. So I ain't got to prepare for it. So here's Tuesday. Let me ask you something. What's missing? Well, when you're a preacher, I've just been so busy. Well, you, you, know, you know, it's just been tough this week. And I, you know, it's just, listen, it's tough on everybody right now. It's tough on everybody right now. You know what's missing? <laughs> We're too busy with the day. We're too busy with stuff. Listen, there's, there's no room. There's no room for him in our day. There's no room for him, uh, you know, as we're on the job. You know, they frown on this, and they frown on that, and, and, and I get it, and sometimes they do, and I know you're not getting paid to witness, and I know you're not getting paid to, 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 to hand out tracts and stuff on your job. I get that and understand that, and we'll get to some of that in a minute, but, uh, but you know, what, what, what about your day? Is there any room at all for the Lord Jesus Christ? Is there any room at all for, for him to fit, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the day, or even before night, before you go to bed? Is there ever any room for the Lord? Well, you know what? Uh, there was no room for him there. There was no vacancy. Amen? What does that mean? It means there's no room. And what does that mean? It, mean, it means that because there was no room, that meant that there was something already there that they could not allow this situation to happen. Amen. I, listen, I'm not preaching this message to get on anybody, so y'all don't, y'all don't throw darts at me or nothing. Amen. I'm just trying to remind us, folks, that even when Jesus was born, they had no room for him. Amen. The world that was then is just like the world that is today. There's no room for the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, they're trying to get as much of him out of our world as possible. Amen. So what about your day? Is there any room for the Lord Jesus Christ in your day? How about this? And, and this is, uh, this is just, just, I'll try to hit this kind of, kind of quick and go on, but now there's no room in the schools for him either, right? There's no room in our government. There's no room. Listen, there's plenty of room for genderisms, right? There's plenty of room for racisms. There's, there's plenty of room for plain old lies, amen? Eva pollution, amen? I mean, there's plenty of room for that stuff. There's plenty of room for that stuff. But for the truth, no. I, I was, we, we was uh, with Randy and Karen the other night. Uh, uh, we just happened to be in town, and, and, and so we stopped. We, anyway, we were having a conversation. I, I do not usually read any of the things on the computer, but this one caught my eye. And it was about vaccinations and people that uh, uh, were and were not vaccinated for the, for the COVID. And, and listen, I'm, I'm not pushing either way. So, so I'm just, you know, here I'm neutral about the thing. And, and so, but here's the article. The article in short said this. It said that people that did not get vaccinated were more apt to have car accidents. And I'm thinking, this has got to be so stupid, I got to read it. And you know what? It was. And here's their reasoning. The people that would not get vaccinated would, would, would possibly uh, have more car wrecks because uh, they would not pay attention to the roadsides as well as somebody other, uh, that would get vaccinated would because basically they were saying they were rebels. That's pretty stupid. And I'm thinking, well, and they, I read most all of the article and skimmed through, uh, uh, skimmed through a lot of it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, just this article itself... Is, 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 is 
promoting uh, uh, what, they're, what they're saying that, that we are promoting. They're, they're, they're saying that, that, you know, well, if you don't get vaccinated, you're a problem. They're saying if you don't get vaccinated, you're going to have a car wreck. <laughs> you, I, full, come on. I, I, I can't make this stuff up. I can't make this stuff up. And the, here's, here's, the, here's the more stupider side of it. There's people that believe it. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised the Lord let them reproduce. Amen. I mean, it's, but there's no room in our schools. There's no room in our government. Education, education, education. I get it. Education's good. Amen. As I've said, education is wonderful, but education without salvation is damnation. And so you've got to be careful of that. They're teaching lies for the evolution, the greenhouse effect. Amen. And save the baby turtles and the darter snails. Amen. Te listen, here's a good one. Teach them that these little kids right here, teach them that they're really nobodies. And you know, that's really what they're doing. If they tell our children that, hey, you can be anybody you want to uh, because you know why that you need to be, be changing? It's because you actually are a nobody. You're not worth anything unless you change. That's what they're teaching them. Listen, that's what, exactly what they're teaching. So they're, they're, they're really uh, boosting their morale to do that and telling them how, how, the, how these things... And you know what? These kids they're telling don't even know how to spell yet. They don't even know their ABCs. Hey, man, they're six-year-olds. They're five-year-olds. They're seven-year-olds. And boy, aren't they helping them out a lot. But our government, that are smarter than mom and dad, decided that these six-year-olds need to be able to decide for themselves if they're a boy or a girl. Amen. Let me ask you something. What are we missing? Hey, man, what are we missing? Hey, listen, I, I know in 1963 that at, uh, 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 Madeline O'Hare, she, she, uh, she uh, petitioned our government to get prayer out of school. I, I, I got that. It's, and she did. It, it happened. But can I tell you, this thing happened long before then. This thing was going that way long before then. Amen. If you look back in history and you look at these things, I can tell you, first of all, that it happened right here when Jesus was first born. There was no room for him. There's no room in our government for, for, for Jesus, amen. There's no room in our schools for Jesus. What is it? What, why? There's no vacancy. Why? Because what's there? Lies, propagandas, amen. Uh, I mean, teaching our children and teaching our families and teaching our kids the lies that they come from animals and monkeys and all this stuff. Listen, it's just real simple. If, if we came from monkeys, why we still got monkeys running around? Amen. Why we still got these things running around for? Some of them just didn't take? What is it? I don't know. But it just don't make sense if you just had half a brain and could think for yourself. Amen. Hey, listen, cut the TV off and read. Amen. Cut the thing off. Oh, I forgot. We don't have room. Amen. We don't have room. What a thing. Like I said, I'm not getting on you. It's just, you know, we need to be reminded of some of these things. So there's no room in all these things. Why? Because there's plenty of uh, lies and confusion to, fa to take its place. Amen. Plenty of lies and confusion to take its place. Can I, can I keep going? Where's Brother Over? Miss Gina, can I keep going? Brother Over's not here. We'll get Miss Gina. Is it okay? Amen. <laughs> Let me ask you this, and we're just going to move right along. How about in our conversations? How about in our talk? Amen. Do we have room for the Lord Jesus Christ in our speech and in our talk? You know, uh, when, when, I, when I look for a car or a truck and I'm in the market to buy something, you know, and I see one sitting on the side of the road, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, uh, I'm pretty uh, uh, quick to just stop, knock on the door and start talking about this truck. Amen? I'm pretty quick. Something that I want, something that I'm going to ask questions about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, hey, uh, what do you want for this? Or what's wrong with it? Or what's going on? Man, I'm going to ask all kinds of questions. And I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to have no problem talking to them. And, and we're going to talk. Listen, us guys, you know what we do? We talk about football. We talk about the weather. Amen. We talk about, uh, you know, uh, as the older we get, uh, you know, we talk about our aches and pains. Amen. Right? Yeah. How are you feeling? Oh, not too good today. Amen. What kind of drugs you want? I mean... Isn't that the conversation? Well, my doctor gave me this, you know. You're to try this one. Amen. 
I mean, that's what we talk about, right? Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm right. Amen? That's what we do. We talk about these things. We talk about the things that we're interested in. We talk about the things that are on our mind the most. Our conversations are about the things that, uh, that, uh, that we like. And, and, and listen, here's what we talk about the things we, well, most people do. Talk about the things we know most about. Some people don't know about nothing, but they flat run their mouth, don't they? Amen. But our conversation, what are we talking about? Do we ever bring up the Lord? Do we ever bring up how good he's been to us? Do we ever talk about what he's done for us? Amen. Do we? Man, I tell you, sometimes in our conversation, we just ain't got room. We just ain't got room. You ever walked away from somebody and the Holy Spirit said, boy, you blew that one. <laughs> man, I've walked away from people and the, and the Lord just convicted my heart and said, man, why didn't, why didn't you say something? I've been pumping gas before. And, and, and somebody pull up on the other side. I, I mean, you know, and I'm pumping gas. And, and, and the Lord would say, hey, you got a track? It's like, man, I ain't got a track. Sorry, Lord. And then, and then a few minutes later, or, or, or whatever, and I'm still pumping gas. The Lord said, hey, if you'll look in your, in, your, in your car there in the door, I think there's a track down there that you've been saving, yeah. you know, for the right one. Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord, and, I, and I'm, just, I'm just saying, Lord, how do you know that? <laughs> How'd you know that track was in there? <laughs> Amen. So after I get through pumping gas, I look in the door, and sure enough, there's a track. <laughs> and it's like, give it to them. Amen. And I, listen, we, we talk about what we're interested in. We talk, about, we talk about the things that are in our mind and all this stuff. And we, we, we have these conversations and, you know, about how that our team's doing, how that this is doing, and, and maybe even how are you doing and things like that. But, man, have we ever told anybody how good God's been to us? Have we ever told anybody our testimony? And listen, I know it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's not just, you know, the door's got to be open. But I guarantee you if we pray about it, Lord, open the door. He's always done that. Amen. He's always done that. He'll always open the door for us to tell somebody uh, about him. And, 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 and we, mu we must be watching for that. We must be listening for that. We must be in a place to where that we just open up a space for the Lord and say, hey, Lord, this is your time. What do, you, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this? And sometimes, listen, you don't even have to say anything if you've got a track. Sometimes you can just say this. Hey, well, would you read this whenever you get an opportunity? I go through the drive-thru. The, the, uh, one of the last times I went through the drive-thru, I was in Huntsville at Burger King. Got me one of them big old whoppers, amen. Two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a special bun, amen. <laughs> no onions, though. We took the onions off. So I got me one of them things, and man, I pulled up to the, I pulled up to the drive-thru, and, and uh, I had a Christmas track there in the, in the vehicle, and, and man, the, the young man, it was a young black man, he gave me, give me my, my stuff, and I said, hey, I said, uh, I said, here you go, here's your track, would you take a break or something, would you, man, I sure will, I'm going to read this. Amen. I mean, he didn't shoot me. He didn't cuss me out. He didn't throw it back at me. Amen. He took it and said, I'm going to read this. Amen. Just make room. Just make room. Amen. We can all do that. I purposed in my heart one time, it's been several years ago, when, this, when we still had the mall over there where the top golf thing is and all that stuff there on, on, on uh, University Drive in Huntsville. <laughs> And I purposed in my heart one day, and I went over there, and, and I, was, I was just going through the mall, people walking around, and I was going to hand out tracks. But I wasn't just going to give it to just anybody. I had a handful of tracks, and, and I purposed in my heart and said, I'm going to give, give these tracks to the people that looks like they do not want one. And, and, and you, you know who that is? You know, the bikers, you know, they come walking around, these big old guys and all this stuff. Amen. It's like, when I, once I started seeing them, I didn't realize they looked so mean. Amen. So, I didn't realize they were so big. <laughs> and so, man, I, I got these tracks, and, and, man, and you know something? I just, I just got past me, 
And I went out there, and listen, I'm not lifting me up. I'm just giving you illustrations that, listen, God, God will open a door. God will show you that, hey, uh, it, it's okay to hand a track. It's okay to say you love the Lord, amen. Don't listen to the garbage they're saying up yonder, amen. Uh, you still read your Bible. You still be a good witness. You still hand out a few tracks, amen. Hey, listen, I, I walked up to the guy, and man, it was a biker. Had his leather on and all that stuff. And, and man, I handed him a track, and I said, hey, this this thing here will tell you about Jesus. It'll tell you how to be saved. And he looked down at me <laughs> and he said, appreciate that. Amen. And he walked on. He didn't hit me. He didn't cuss me. He didn't shoot me. Amen. Right. Yeah. And I walked away yeah. nervously. <laughs> and folks, I can tell you time after time where the Lord has took care of situations, not just me. Me and Brother Randy and Brother Tom and Brother Adam, man, we spent a week in prison preaching and handing out tracts, amen. <laughs> I spent several weeks in prison and different ones. And you get locked in, man, you go into prison and man, you hear the jail cell or the, the prison cell, the, the, the clanging of the doors and all the stuff coming behind you and they're, and they're locking the doors behind you. That's a weird, eerie feeling. But you know, you get in there, you realize that these are people and they're dying and they're going to hell Amen. if you don't reach them. Amen. So why? Why don't we make room in our conversations? Why don't we make room for them? Amen. Right. You know, I only got just a couple more and I'll be done. But we find there that there's no room in our conversations. There's no room in our schools and our governments. And there's plenty of other things, but there's no room for Jesus. And there's no room in our day sometimes. But you know something? I'm going to try to bring it down to where we live a little bit. <laughs> We're finding that nowadays there's no room in our church for him. There's no room in our churches for him. Amen. I mean, we've got too many programs. I mean, we, listen, we've got to start on time. We've we got to end on time. Amen. We, we've got to we've got to we've got to sing the right song. Amen. We are going to learn two seventy three. Amen. <laughs> we, we've we've got to learn. I mean, we've got to have these things just down pat. We really do. I mean, you know, because I, you know what? We, I I got somewhere to be. I got somewhere else to go. And you know something? We got to have these things just right. It's not you don't laugh in church. You sit up straight. Don't yell. Amen. Come on. Don't shout. Mm -hmm. What have we done? Well, we've run the Lord completely out. Yeah. Here's what we need to do. I'm going to read this. I wrote this down, so if I, I'm going to read this part. We've got to get us a preacher that's nice and polished. I mean, boy, he's got to be, he's got to have a degree. Amen. And he never raises his voice above a normal talk. Okay. We got, listen, we've got to stay within the boundaries of, of, of conviction, which is no conviction. We must be done at 12 noon, right? Or before, right? No preaching on hell. No preaching on death or dying. Nothing against positive thinkers. Never say anything about Facebook. <laughs> that was my thought. <laughs> No preaching against women running the home. Boy, that was really, really quiet there. No preaching about uh, 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 altar calls. For heaven's sake, don't have an altar call. Don't do that. You ever seen Joel Osteen have an altar call? Yeah, he's got to have an altar first, I guess. Amen. You ever heard him preach on hell? Or dying or death? I've never heard him. But from what I hear about his preaching, he never preaches on any of that stuff. How's he going to get anybody to stay away from it if he don't preach about it? Well, here's, here's the good part of it. God can be preached, but only in general. Yeah. Only in general. You know, just, just vastly. You know, no specifics like Jesus is his son. Amen. No preaching on Jesus. No preaching on Jesus dying for your sin. Because we're not sinners. Right? <laughs> Absolutely no referring to the King James Bible as the Word of God. 
Amen. That's the kind of preachers we, that, that, that our churches are, 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 are targeting. That's who they're wanting. Amen. Don't convict me. Don't tell me I'm a sinner. Don't tell me I've messed up and the things that I'm doing ain't right. Don't tell me there's a real hell. Don't tell me that people are dying. God's a good God. He wouldn't send anybody to hell. Don't tell me that there's death coming after this. Listen, I just got a facelift. Amen. I just got all this other stuff. I ain't going to die now. I got a vacation coming. Right? Don't tell me this stuff. We need a nice preacher. We need a nice preacher that don't yell. Don't let his face get red. Amen. We need a nice preacher that don't get upset about things. And we need a nice preacher that has nothing to do with the business meeting so the church can run the business. Amen. Let's let, let's let the deacons do the job. And preacher, all you do is just preach till 12 o'clock. Amen. What's What's missing? Hmm. Where, where, where's he at? Well, Revelation chapter 3 says he's outside the door knocking, trying to get in. Amen. Does this make sense? I mean, listen, folks, there's no room for him anymore. Everywhere you go, there's no room for him. You, listen, it's happy holidays, not Merry Christmas. And if it is Merry Christmas, there's an X there, amen? It's, it's happy holidays or stuff like that. No, where, where is Christ in our, in, our, in our world today? Where is he in our churches today? Where is he in our days? Where is he in our schools and in our government? Where is he in our homes, amen? There's no room, just no room. We're too busy. There's vac no vacancy there, amen? No vacancy, amen? Now let, me, let me finish with this. I only got this one, and I'm going to give you some scripture here. Listen, no, there's no room in our conversation. There's no room in our church. There's no room in our schools. There's no room in our days. There's no room in our government, in our, in our, in, in, in our homes. There's just no room now. We've gotten to the place to where we can live and we can function without Jesus. We've got to the place to where we can preach, we can have church, we can do all these things, and God's never there. I mean, how do I know that? Well... I've been in a few of them. And I'm just going to confess to you, I've preached a couple of times, <laughs> very conservatively, uh, a number there, but, but I've preached a few times without the Lord. Amen. You ever prayed and didn't mean it? I, I mean, there's been plenty of times to where that we all just, we just live our day. Amen. The last point this morning is, is talking about no room. How about this one? There's just no room in our heart. Boy, that one's tough. There's no room in our heart. I'll give you a few passages of Scripture about, about our heart. You know something? We can hide our heart from, from many of those that are around us. We can hide our heart. We can hide a lot of things from our spouses, from our moms, dads, from our kids. We can hide a lot of things from our coworkers and friends. But listen, the Bible says that the Lord knows our heart. In, in, in one of my favorite verses over there is Jeremiah 17, 9, where it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, in verse 10, the Bible says this, that God, he says, I, the Lord, search the heart. He says, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God knows your heart. God knows if he has a place in your heart. God knows if there's a place, if there's room in your heart. Not only that, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, the Bible is talking about Samuel as he, uh, as he raises up, uh, uh, goes and, 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 and anoints David as a king, as God was raising up David to be the king over Israel. And so we find in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, uh, the Bible says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. And here he says, he, this is what God says. He says, For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance. But the Bible says, But the Lord looketh on the heart. You see, we, we, we judge people and we, we, we uh, assume things by what we see in the appearance. Samuel thought Eliab and, 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 and David's brothers would, would be uh, uh, perfect for king because of their outward appearance. Well, they thought that about Saul too. The Bible says Saul was head and shoulders above the rest of them. Amen. And, and so uh, Samuel was looking at the outward appearance and, and then God spoke to Samuel and said, Look, he, says, Y'all, he said, man looks on the outward appearance. He says, but I, the Lord, look at the heart. Yeah. Yeah. He knows what's in our heart. 
So what's happened? We've replaced the Lord with something or someone in our heart, and guess what? It's turned our heart away. It's turned our heart away. One of the most famous characters in our Bible to teach us that is Solomon. Solomon started out with, with, with you know, just being a son of David. But the Bible says that uh, God chose Solomon to be the next king after David. And you know what God did? God gave him wisdom, and God gave him riches beyond anybody of his day. And you know what, why God did that is because God said whenever Samuel, uh, uh, Solomon prayed, he said, you didn't ask for riches. And he said, you didn't ask for wisdom. He said, the wisdom and things that you asked for was to be able to raise my people and to re reign and to rule my people. And he said, because you didn't ask it selfishly, he said, I'm going to give you not only wisdom, but he said, I'm going to give you riches as well. Yeah. And you know what God did? Why? Because Solomon prayed with a pure heart. God saw his heart. But something happened. Something happened. And here's what happened. 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse number 3. And the Bible says this, And he had 700 wives. Wow, that's a lot of mom-in-laws. Amen. <laughs> 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives, listen, turned away his heart. Verse 4 says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. His heart was not perfect with the Lord his God. Now listen, Solomon, in that instance, it was his wives. But what is our instance? It may be a thing. It may be a person or it may be a thing. It, 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 could, be, it could be our job. Amen. Amen. It could be our hobby. Listen, it could be our family. Yeah, we're supposed to take care of our family. We're supposed to take care of our spouses. We're supposed to love each other and care for each other. But listen, uh, where's God? Where's God? I, his heart was turned away. Can I tell you something? If a heart is turned away, and I'm talking about a lost person, if their heart is turned away, you see, that's how God deals with man is in the heart. You see, here, here's, I want you to think about this. How many of you agree that sin is a problem in our world? Sin is a problem. But can I tell you, sin is not the problem? You know what the problem is? Is this right here? We have a heart problem. Man doesn't get saved, a woman doesn't get saved, a child doesn't get saved. The reason why they don't get saved is because it's a heart problem. It's not, it, we, can't, we can't use the excuses of all this other stuff and, and we could use them, but they won't stand. But it all, the reality of the thing is, is it's a heart problem. That's the problem. Sin is a problem, but it ain't the problem. But see, we don't want to admit that. Just like, just like the, 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 the preacher uh, that, that, that they want in their churches, don't tell me I'm a sinner. Don't tell me I do things wrong. <laughs> The story goes that uh, there was a little boy that come to the altar or a little girl that come to the altar and, and the mom come down to the altar uh, with the little girl and the little girl's praying and, 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 and the preacher, the pastor comes down beside him and the little girl is saying, saying I'm a sinner, I'm lost, I, I, I'm, I'm no good, I do bad things. I'm just, I mean, she's just a wee little girl. And she's saying, you know, I'm, I've done wrong, I'm a sinner and I, and I need to be saved and I'm this and that. And her mama's right beside of her as the preacher is listening. And her mama's beside of her saying, Listen, little Susie, you're not, you're not bad. You're not bad. You're not a real sinner. You, you're a good little girl. And so the preacher told the, told the mom, said, Listen, <laughs> as long as you do that, they're, they're not going to get saved. And you know why people aren't getting saved? Because they quit coming from up here. It, coming, it quit coming from up here. And so because of that, guess what? God can't speak to their heart. Their heart becomes hard. It becomes, it becomes, it becomes uh, 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 so calloused with the things of, of, that's been turn, turned it away. And that's the very thing that God uses to try to deal with people for them to be saved is that he deals with their heart. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart. Amen. 
He says in verse number 10 over there, he says, For the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You see, it's not a sin. Uh, it's not the sin being the problem. Sin is a problem, but it's a heart problem. It's a heart problem. Why is it a heart problem? We ain't got room. Something's turned our heart away. Something's turned us away from doing right. Something's turned us away from doing what God wants us to do. Something's turned us away from allowing time for God in our heart. No room. Just no room. You want to know why that our world is turning the way it's turning? There's just no room. Let me urge you to, to, to study up on some of our history of where this country come from. Read about those, those men that were in president season and read about some of those people. You know why that the people came from England and settled over here in, the, in what we call the, that was old England, <laughs> and they settled in what we call the New England states? You, you want to know why they came over here? It's so they could exercise their religious rights. <clears throat> And you know their religious rights were that they could call upon God. That's how this country started. And if you really want to know uh, 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 about how that uh, some of our first presidents and, and some of our people, how they got to accomplish some of the things that they accomplished, then read about their life. Read about what they professed. I'm not saying that they were great people in the sense that they never made mistakes. And they, but what they did do is they gave glory where glory was due. They gave, they gave honor to where honor was due, and they had no problem getting on their knees and praying in front of their peers. Could you see Biden doing that? Oh, did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. C could you see our government doing that? Could you see that? Could you see them? No, we've got to separate. We've got to separate. That's religious stuff. We got, that's a personal thing with people, and you just can't discuss that. It is personal. Let me tell you something. If a person don't get saved, they're personally going to die and go to hell. It is personal. And you know what? When it comes to my kids and comes to my family and comes to my kin folks, that's very personal. I want them to hear the truth. I want them to know the truth. Well, it just, it just, it just make, makes them upset. I, hey, I'd rather people get mad at me and get saved and go to heaven than, than for them to, to be okay on earth and die and go to hell. Right. <laughs> That's just a temporary thing that they can be mad at me about. I could care less, but, but hell is a real place and it's an eternity. Yeah. You got room for him today? Yeah. Hey, I know it's Sunday. Most people, a lot of people, you know, they got room, you know, for an hour or two, but do you really have room? You see, it didn't just start. It, it, man, this was this was a long time ago. When he first showed up, no room. No room. Maybe we ought to just search our own heart. Maybe we ought to just search our own, uh, just, just in our own mind and just find out how much time we have for the Lord. How much time, I mean, just, let's just start now. Amen? Here we are, we're almost at the end of the year. If the Lord doesn't come back, we'll be celebrating, you know, a New Year's, you know, coming, coming to 23. Imagine that. But, but, but it, it, are you going to have more of God in 23 than you do now? Why don't we start a week or so early, a couple of weeks early, and let's just start planning. Hey, I'm, I'm going to have God in my day, somewhere in my day. If it's 10 minutes, if it's 20 minutes, if it's 5 minutes, I want God in my day. Amen. Nobody, listen, everybody's different. Everybody's got different schedules. But somewhere, put God in your day. Put God in, 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 in your school somehow, in your schoolwork or whatever. If it's just praying, Lord, help me pass this test. Amen. <laughs> somewhere, put God in it. Acknowledge who he is. Amen. Amen. And I know moms, you know, raising your kids, Lord, Please don't let me beat my kids today, amen? <laughs> Somewhere in that day, put God in there. All he's asking is for a little room. That's all he's asking for. Amen. Lord, could you come to the piano? Let's, let's stand and let's bow our heads and just think. Just think. Do you have room for him? Have a place for him?